Breaking news as we say that. Sorry, breaking news. We're not going to start with Man United. Breaking news has just come out that Chelsea have submitted a new bid for Moises Caicedo in the last 24 hours. They understand that Chelsea's new proposal was £80 million and it has been rejected. £80 million for uh, Caicedo rejected. So all them journalists who said they believe a deal would be done for £80 million are now wrong. Tony Bloom has said no. They have rejected it. They have rejected it. What now, Don? What now, Don? It's been rejected. uh, 93 million euros rejected. We're going to have to go back in again. (laughs) We're going to have to go back in again. Um, It was never going to be easy. And like I said, they've got a sour taste in their mouth because of the whole coal situation. So the same way we sweetened them up last last summer when we bought Cucurella and gave them coal on loan, um, we're going to have to give them a little bit more money. Do you know what I mean? I thought it would have been wrapped up maybe 85 million, but now you're looking maybe around the 90s mark, maybe just under 100 million. But I know a lot of Chelsea fans are, are getting fed up with, with Brighton or just walk away. But we've had, we've had a conversation about this a million and one times. If we walk away, there's there's no one at, at Casado's level. You know, people were saying Paulinho, but for me, Paulinho, I rate him. But in two, three seasons, we'll have to replace him again. The guy's 28. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Casado's going to be at the club for, for a decade. He can be here for, for a long time if he stays at the club. He's still young. So we're going to have to up that bid and, and go back in. You know, um, if uh, uh, this is a joke now, this is a joke. It's taken too long. Just just pay up. Do you know what I mean, up the money and, and pay up now because it's becoming a bit of a bit of a joke. Um, you know, uh, it's a bit of a positive sign that we've actually put another bid in because I don't know what, what Chelsea are waiting for, but it, it's not going to be easy to get done. So we're probably going to look maybe around the 90s mark, I reckon, in my opinion. But we just need to get it done. <laughs> we need to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Like, from a rival point of view, talk to me, people. What are we saying about this deal? Big up, Don. The real Don's about to speak. Um, here's the thing when it comes to... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. When it comes to, to, to Chelsea Football Club, I agree with Don completely. I think Chelsea need to go back in for him. thing is, the, the truth is, they wasted a whole lot of time, a whole lot of time going after Caicedo. So I think they need to make a decision soon. They need to make a quick, quick, quick decision. Do we just carry on with this? You know, pay pay them the money that they want and just get it done with? Or do we just, you know, move on to like a new player? Because also like from Don's perspective and other Chelsea fans' perspectives, they can't be waiting. It's like it's almost August. Like the Premier League is literally about to start in just like a bit over two weeks. They don't have time for this crap. They don't have time for this nonsense. They need the player to be in there, you know, to have time under Pochettino to be ready for that first game. So for me, like, I look at Caicedo. I think he moves the needle for them. But at the same time, they've got to make a decision. They've got to take a decision. Either you go ahead and you pay the money that Brighton want, uh, you know, um, or you just go ahead and move to other targets. And, you know, he's t- it's talking about Brighton. I can't lie, all the Chelsea fans have started a new rivalry with Brighton. It's the funniest thing I've seen my whole life. <laughs> They're starting, people are starting to say, all my homies hate Brighton and stuff. They, they, they've had enough of, of Brighton. But I understand from Brighton's perspective because they looked at the Declan Rice deal and they're like, okay, if he went for 105 million, I ain't about to sell my asset for like 30 million, 20 million less than that. So I understand what they mean because from Tony Bloom's perspective, whether we agree with it or not, he's probably looking at Caicedo in the class of Declan Rice. That's just the reality. I'll add a little bit to it as well. I think Chelsea, they've um, they've been a bit slow on it. And I think, as you Sam sort of highlighted it, it's the fact that he hasn't had the time in pre-season. I think Arsenal were sort of suffering from that for the last few seasons. We took too long with deals. Um, that one that comes to mean is like the Thomas party on the on the deadline day. Uh, Mudrich as well. And Chelsea just came in and went, here's the money, have it. Um, and then they accepted it. Um, I think, like you, you, you try to try and get as cheap as you can for him, but she should have done what Arsenal did when uh, Man City came in and put a rice bid down. We went right. Well, have that. Have 105 million. You can't say no to it. Um, so I think Chelsea really need to sort of get their get their thumb out their ass really and do um and do get their deal done because Casado because Casado is a is a bowler man. He's a bowler. Mm, mm. Like don't get wrong, he will change any midfield. He'll revolutionise any midfield. Um, and like you said, he can be there for a decade. Um, so is that player 100, worth 100 million? He won't be there for a decade. He won't be there. He, he, he won't, won't be there, there for a decade. But you know what I mean? He'll be there for a longer period than Paulinho. Is what I'm, Real what I'm Madrid, saying. Barcelona, come calling, he's gone. That's just I think to I think to the, to rate him as as expensive as Rice is a bit high. I think I think 90 million should have been enough. 
Um, it should should be enough to get him like a hundred million is a bit crazy because like, uh, it's just it's just Declan Rice is just a better player and he's done it for year after year. Uh, Casado's done it for maybe a year and a half, so like you just need to sort of like, hold your horses on that. Um, do as as an Arsenal fan though, do I like seeing that Casado's still at Brighton? Absolutely, absolutely. Do, do you know what it is though? Do, do you know what it is? This, 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 what was deluded? Mm. What what did you say was deluded? The I price? said I said it's, it's delu- yeah, it's deluded for them to think that he's worth the same amount as uh, as Declan Rice because even Declan Rice is a bump. Do you know what I'm saying? But Declan Rice, like Monty just said, he's been doing this now for five six seasons. casado has been doing it for a year and a half. And like I said, I, I don't I don't want Chelsea to to pay that 100 million because not only is it going to set precedent for for like future clubs. Me and Hussam and Staffy were saying this the other day on Hussam's stream. Yeah, if any other clubs like smaller clubs have a player like Casado, he's only been in the league for a season. And now the big clubs want to buy him. You're looking at 100 million minimum, minimum. So right now we're trying to avoid doing that. We're trying to avoid setting further precedent. And you, you this should be a lesson. Though. This should be. This should be. Hold on, hold on. This should be a lesson. This should be a lesson for for footballers going forward anyway. Because obviously they had that verbal agreement with Casado. They had nothing in writing. They promised him he can leave. They upped his money and said, "Listen, you can leave in the summer if you stay now. We'll give you more money." And they've broken their word. It, it's not in writing. So they're, they're more than. They're more than in their right to do that. So this should be a lesson for agents, for footballers going forward. Put it in writing. Don't listen to no gentleman agreement like Harry Kane. We've got another example now of Casado because they're making it really difficult for him. Now he needs to step up and, and start pushing a lot more on his side as well. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't he needs know, to push I don't know how more. you lot feel, but Chelsea fans talking about budgeting doesn't sound right to me because you done that for Modric. You just he's, you never had issues splashing the cash. So we're talking about saving 10, 15 mil done. Like, would you, what are you would talking you, about? What do you mean? We're talking about we're talking about a player and that is being, for Enzo as well. By the way, we're talking about hold yeah, on, like, hold on, hold on. We're talking Chelsea, about Chelsea we're talking about. Wait, wait. Modric let me uh, let me answer let me answer, let me answer your question. Let me answer your question then, because eighty five million for Casado is more than reasonable. Do you get it? Over hundred million. It's it's their player. People are gonna turn around and say it's their player. Pay up more than hundred million for Casado right now. A year and a half in the prem is more than unreasonable. More than. Unreasonable. But how much? How much? Eighty five. Mudrick was what sixty million plus um, plus add-ons, which took Wait, it up to about eight, eight, about eighty, about oh, in the eighties. Nah, it was one hundred and five uh, million all in all. It was, it wasn't, no, 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 no. It's about it's the the, to, the total amount of the deal is about eighty eight million, I believe, and most of that is add-ons. It's about sixty. It's about sixty million. But anyway, don't talk about Mudrick because we we went in there and didn't mess about like you your negotiators. We went in there and got that done asap. What I'm talking about with Casado, yeah, but that's Jermaine's point though. You no, actually point, messed up the market to begin with. Yeah, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying right now is. 85 million, 90 million is 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 more than reasonable for Casado right now. 100 million plus is is excessive. Let's not do this rivalry thing and let's just talk about football now. And let's just talk no, about. No, no, we agree with you. But Tony Bloom won't agree with you. That's I, I know player. that. I know but that. I will say this with Chelsea. I know that they're looking at the Declan Rice deal. You got to think about it. You paid 100 and 121 million euros for Enzo Fernandez. You mm. paid 80 million for Fofana. 70 million. This is euros. For Mahalo Mudrik, you paid 65 million to them last year for Mark Kukurea. The problem is mm. Chelsea have set a precedent early under their new ownership that they will spend absolute top dollar on players. And I think that's what they're trying to do to you now is say, well, if you want him, you're going to have to pay this. And you're right. Mm. Kaiseido has made a massive mistake by signing that new that new deal, that new deal was apps. I know he was only earning like stu- like for a professional Premier League football. I think he was on about two and a half grand a week up until mm. that new deal. And I get that people want to secure money for their family, but to do it without a buyout clause is utterly ridiculous from Caicedo because it's created this situation. And the closer you get to deadline day, the more money you're going to pay. It, it, that's the way the market works because you become more and more desperate. So I, I don't see this happening. I mean, the fact that they instantly, again, the speed of rejection is key. According to Fabrizio, it was instantly rejected, which means 80 million is nowhere near their asking price. Does that mean if, if they were mm. happy with 82, 83, 84, 85, they'd probably consider 80 million. But the fact they went, no, yeah. that tells you they want much nearer. I don't think it will be 100 million. I yeah. think it will be nearer 90 to 95 for you to go. But the most important thing is that you've got a midfield for the start of the season. Because I thought you looked good in parts of your preseason game last night. I thought Jackson up front looks, um, he was a player that I knew nothing about when I first saw you get him. I'm like, I didn't read anything good about him. I thought, wow, what's this guy? He looks amazing. Some of the ways you're moving the ball looks really good. But for the for the Premier League season, to just start the season with Enzo, I don't really rate that the rest of your midfield is young, inexperienced, or, you know, or Conor Gallagher. You need so much more than that. So I think you guys have just got to bite the bullet now, mm. pay the money they're asking and get him through the door. And, 
it's going to take some time for you to undo the damage done by your owners in terms of overpaying. How do I know that? Man United, you know, Man United have been overspending for years, and it takes a long time for clubs to take you seriously. Look at Sabitzer. We wanted Sabitzer. They wanted 45, 50 million for him. We said no, too much. They just sold him to Dortmund for 19 million. Look at the premium they're adding on because of how we've operated in the transfer market for years. So it's an interesting one now for Chelsea. Like, Staffy, what's your take on it, bro? Listen, I, I feel like what Don, I, I agree with Don, you know, they're trying to do the right thing and not get bullied even more on this deal because I, I do feel like they're already overpaying. I think giving them 80 million or so is already a fair deal. But when you, Hossam is also right, and, and Jermaine, when they're saying, well, when they look at the, the Mudrik, Mudrik deal and, and, and um, what's his name, Enzo and all that, they're seeing that they recently, just very recently, they've been overpaying for players. So they want to take him for a ride too. Chelsea's trying to cut that out. I mean, the circumstances I feel is a little bit different because no one is in strongly for Caicedo right now other than Chelsea. So Chelsea are kind of taking advantage of that, of being the only team that's in for him and not having to overpay. When they overpaid for Mudrik, it was because Arsenal were strongly in for him and whoever was going to pay was going to get him. Same for Enzo. If they didn't get Enzo in January um, for over the, um, what was it? His, uh, pay, uh, his, his buyout clause. clause, his release mm -hmm. clause. If they didn't pay a little bit over it, they would have had to wait for the summer. But come su the summer, they probably would have had Madrid and Barcelona and them going in with them. You know, 100%. so they had to. So sometimes, yes, I get it. They overpaid, but the context around it made sense. But when you're the only one in the store, you don't have to sit there and have to overpay because, you know, you're the only one who, who was there negotiating. So I understand both points and I understand both sides. But, you know, I think Don wanting his, his club to get the deal done, but at the same time, not extremely overpay. I think that's fairly okay on his side because so as a Man United fan, I've seen my team do, do that for a while. And now when we get deals done at a reasonable price and we're not being taken for a ride as, as much as we used to, that's I feel question, more confident bro. about that. No, I mean, we, we've been a little bit better recently. Yeah, you have to be Anthony very fair. Mount, Hoyland. Very Matt, we do, did we overpay for Matt? I mean, 100%. you don't rate Mount. You think we overpaid for Mount for 55 million? 100%. I see what final you are saying about the contract. You definitely overpaid. Fifty-five. I see what million. you are saying about the. Um, yeah, that's a lot of money. But, but you're saying that because you don't rate him, which is why I I, I get your point. But Mount a year ago would have been way more than fifty-five million. So we I, would I, see. We would I, see I, I next season. We would see. see. I highly disagree when you say that. I understand the Anthony one. No, but Don here here's the thing. The contract as well. The Chelsea thing. Yeah, he don't have the Chelsea thing. We all agree with Don. The problem is Tony Bloom doesn't agree. That's the problem here with the whole conversation. He, he doesn't care about it's the contracts. Yeah, it's not. It's not us. We agree with you that eighty million. I like. We he should accept it. But the problem is he's looking at rice. In my that's what I think at least. He's probably comparing those two transfers and going mm. like, I think he's that level of player. So he wants probably around that level of money. That's the unfortunate reality. So it's not whether we agree or not. We do agree. He doesn't agree though. Yeah, it's, it's like this. I should be able to go out and leave my front door unlocked, but I can't. If I do that, I might get robbed. End of the mm. day, there's things you should be able to do. You shouldn't be after you shouldn't have to pay this much for Caicedo, but you're getting to this point in the market where if 80 million straight out, no add ons, is rejected cash basically or as a guaranteed fee, it's going to be a lot more. So, yeah, it, it's intriguing because you are looking good though, Chelsea. Like, I know you only drew last night against Newcastle. I, did you watch the game, Don? Yeah, I watched it. I watched the full game. I mean, I, I want to get your take because I was quite impressed, mm. especially with Jackson up front. I thought he looked dangerous, dynamic, good first touch on the ball. His link up play was good. And I know it's preseason, and, and a lot of people don't like to put too much stock in preseason performances. But Chelsea are starting to, you really saw some green shoots of improvement under uh, Poch. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, like I said the other day, I'm, I'm seeing patterns of play, I'm seeing tactics, I'm seeing players who can actually dribble with the ball. Do you know what I mean? They're not they're not treating the ball like a hot potato. That's what I was seeing a lot last season. The past five years, I've seen a lot of players that haven't been great in possession. So it's been refreshing to see players who are you know quite comfortable in the ball and you know can can simply follow instructions. Do you know what I mean? And yesterday, like you've said there, I think when we started the game, we weren't really getting control of the game. And you can see we need a player like a Casado. Funny enough, I watched the Brighton game before our game, um, and he looked like he wasn't trying to get himself injured, but he still looks levels above. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so when I talk about, 
Yeah, I watched the yeah, Brentford game. Brighton game. It was a good game. Casado, he looks good in that game as well. But back to Chelsea. Um, for me, you know, when, when we scored that goal, it was really good. You know, it came from Bashir, Humphreys, Matson, you know, playing it through to Jackson and then Jackson just peeling off like he's been doing in the past few games that we've seen him. He looks like a like a like a great still. I was saying to Hassan yeah, before Jackson the, looks good. The, looks good. Yeah, before the show, I was saying to Hussam that it, I, I, I'm saying it already. I think he's going to be the biggest still of, of this window. Do you know what I mean? Goals, we know how, how the striker market is right now. And from what I'm seeing so far, I'm seeing someone who can put their foot through the ball. I'm seeing someone who's got good movement. I'm seeing someone who's able to create. I'm seeing someone who's able to link up and hold up the ball. I'm seeing someone who's got skill as well. I'm not sure if you guys saw that little bit in the corner where he had the ball with Gordon. He beat them, mm -hmm. left them both on the floor, done it's a few step overs. Him. Yeah, done a few step overs it's, and tried to score. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and the pressure is mad. To be fair, I'll give him that. He can, yeah. he can make vital passes under like mad pressure. He can take you just on the turn, turn, flicks it up to the to the wing, and you're like, oh, how has he done that? Exactly. What? So, and an, and on top of that, he's got a lot of character and a lot of personality. Um, I was saying the other day, like when we had our stream on on Chelsea Fan TV, like he put a post up on Instagram, and one of the posts was like a like an African guy dancing with a bit of music after he scored the goal. Do you know what I'm saying? We haven't really had someone like that with personality at Chelsea for a while. Everyone's seemed a bit robotic. Do you know what I mean? Everyone seemed like they've checked out and he just seems like he's raring to go. So for me, Jackson, I'm saying it now, I think he's going to be the biggest still um, in this window. Because goals, I said to Terry before, you can't buy goals. Do you know what I'm saying? You cannot buy... I know they're probably going to get Amber back cheaper, but when it comes to goal scoring right now, you know, it's, it's fundamental for all of us. I so I think he'll be the biggest again? still. 35 million euros. 35 million. Speaking of 35 million, the steel of the window is obviously Alexis McAllister. Don is doing, you know, typically, you know, what he accuses Arsenal fans of doing, which is overreacting. It's pre-season, uh, Don. I'm not overreacting. Don, it's pre-season. <laughs> I'm going to give you a name of a player that you probably watched. There's a Liverpool striker by the name of Iago Aspas. He scored in Singapore. He scored mm -hmm. in Indonesia. He scored in Malaysia. He scored in every single pre-season game. We came back to, to the Premier League and he was crap. So preseason doesn't matter. Preseason doesn't matter. The yeah, but preseason preseason pre gives you an indication, though. The results don't no, matter. Doesn't. Yes, but no, the performances it, it definitely no, does. No, it doesn't. We it lost gives every you... single preseason so... game and we won the league. Yeah, but this is the thing. I'm not talking about results, Sam. I'm talking about individual performances. I'm talking about what you can show me. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm sure Jermaine probably wants to see a lot more from Kai Havertz. And right now, I'm not complaining with what I'm seeing from Jackson. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm Kai seeing someone that can that can definitely play. I mean, I like that as well. Like, pre-season, pre you can't you can't discredit pre-season. There's there's mo there's things to take out of it, obviously.